Hello everyone, welcome to Open Pepper Breeding. If you're unfamiliar with us, I encourage you to check out our past videos. Uh, but to keep it short, we're a group of people on social media and we're doing plant breeding by distributing the seeds and distributing the workload between multiple people. So today is kind of an exciting day for me. Uh, the first of our plants with mature fruit are ripening. And so these are the F1s with a plant called Shira Roja by SC cross to Ahichar Pita. So this is our first plant. This is PA005, and as I have two plants, I've denoted this one PA005.01, the first plant in the PA5 population. So before we start taking the fruit off, uh, we're going to look at some of the architectural traits and some of the, the whole plant traits, and then we'll take the fruit off and start cutting them up. The pepper fruit evaluation form that I use to evaluate all of my plants and I made this available to you guys on our pepper breeding so you know go ahead and look for it there and it comes along with an instruction page that can tell you how to uh, use all of these different columns and all the different uh, evaluation criteria but I've also made comments to give you guys some clues about what to do and so you can see we've got quite a few different evaluation criteria. We've got maturity at evaluation, so we're looking whether it's immature, ripe, or overripe. And you can see the single letter codes there to make your life easy. We also have immature fruit color. Uh, you can have white, light green, dark green, or just regular green. And then we have the actual mature fruit color. So this can be red, orange, yellow, pink, white. We also have a modification to the mature fruit color. These are things like reduction in carotenoid accumulation or that cream coloration as well as anthocyanin or brown. Uh, we have the average mass and we're taking the average mass of three representative peppers here. And then we have a, uh, a string of more subjective evaluation criteria and these would be aroma. So zero would be no aroma and that's kind of that olfactory smell. And then we also have one is low and three is intense, two with being intermediate. Flavor, again, kind of subjective, but there's some uh, helpful hints here for you to, to make it more useful comparing across people. Zero would be bland or no flavor. One would be very poor. And so this is peppers that take grass, that taste grassy, bitter, or foul. And uh, two is poor, three is acceptable, four is good, and five is superior. And then we have pungency, and this is how hot a pepper is. This is um, a subjective measure of the capsaicinoid content. And so we have zero being sweet, like a bell pepper, one being very mild, like a mild jalapeno, three being hot, like a strong jalapeno, four very hot serrano, and then all the super hots are lumped together under extremely hot. Uh, bricks. So bricks is measured by a portable refractometer and so this is an empirical measure of the dissolved sugars in a fruit juice and so this is a way for us to get a handle on um, the sweetness aspect of flavor. And then we have fruit per node, uh, vigor and height of the plant. This one is very subjective and so you can see there's a whole spiel there about comparing the height of the plant to you know all of the plants that grow in capsicum. Uh, but the main points are one would be a runt, two is a medium plant, and three is large and vigorous. Uh, then we have productivity. Again, this is a little subjective. And uh, it's a comparison of the crop load to the plant size. And so one is a light crop, two is a good crop, three is a heavy crop. And then you can also have something called overcropping. And that's where the plant just makes too many peppers and either the branches bend and break or the peppers are extremely small due to the competition. Disease, uh, this is real simple, either zero or one, one has a disease present and we would like to keep track of whether any of our material is susceptible to disease. And then the last two, these are really important so that we can make comparisons between the different environments. And so we have location and this is indoors or outdoors. Um, we're not going to take into account, you know, different wattages of light or try to make comparisons between greenhouse and field grown simply indoors or outdoors. And then the last one here is the growth media. And this would be in ground, which would be soil, in a container, which would be a potting mix. And then we have, you know, the whole range of hydro and soilless options under age. And this is everything from, you know, ebb and flow, deep water culture, rock wool, all that stuff is just looped, uh, lumped under hydro. 
And then we have any notes, and this is whether there's you know a less common trait that's present in this selection, or anything that we would like to keep track of, you know, ideas for future crosses, uh, where it needs to be improved, things like that. And so again, this is available to you guys, but before you use it, you need to make a copy. So you go to File, Make a Copy, and then you're going to give it a name that makes sense for yourself, so that you know what it is. And uh, you'll want to copy the comments so that you can have all that helpful information at the top. And you're welcome to share it with me if you like. You don't have to. And so there you go. Now you've got your own copy that you can make edits to. And the first edit to make is to delete that first row. There we go. And then we'll start evaluating our plants. So the first uh, criteria that we're going to fill out is the maturity at evaluation. And so here we have um, at least three mature fruits. So we're going to be evaluating the mature fruit. And then we're going to look at the immature fruit color. And so that's pretty easy. Uh, with this plant, we have the light green immature fruit color here that you can see. And so we're going to put light green for that. And then the mature fruit color, which is red in this case. And then whether there's any modifiers to the mature fruit color and I don't believe that there are here. So let's go ahead and transcribe all that data from the video into our data sheet. So it's PA005.01, the plant we're working with, and it's currently 12722. I'll put my name in here. And so this is when we compile everything, we'll know who, who submitted what data. And so the maturity at evaluation, these are ripe. And the immature fruit color was light green, and the mature fruit color was red. And there were no modifications, so we'll leave it blank. So the next evaluation criteria are the number of fruit per node. And uh, with this plant, we're looking at about one to two. I'm not actually going to count and create an average. I'm just curious that we have an idea of how many they produce, given the fruit size and given the plant vigor. And then we're going to take a measurement of the vigor. And for this plant, I'm going to go ahead and just give it a 2. And then we look at productivity. Uh, as I said, this is producing one or two fruit per node. But it is producing on, on almost every node. So I'm going to give that a rating of 2. And then we have the location. So and then we have disease. And uh, there's not much disease here. There's a little bit of photo bleaching, which is something that you can lump under disease. But it's not... Um, that severe and it's not that different from the rest of the germplasm. So I'm just going to call it disease free. And then we've got the location. These were grown indoors and what type of um, soil or soilless media that was used. And these are just in a potting mix of my own creation. And so that is the, uh, the last of the whole plant traits. And so then we're going to harvest the fruit here and then we'll start looking at the fruit characteristics. The fruit per node, uh, We'll just call it two. The vigor height, it was two. Productivity, um, we opted for a two again here. Disease was zero, except for a little bit of uh, photo bleaching. And the location is indoors and is grown in potting soil. And then, you know, we can make light note of the light photo bleaching here. So when you harvest your fruit, you want to harvest three fruit that are fully mature. And uh, you want to make it representative of the plant. So you don't want to do the smallest fruit and you don't want to pick just, you know, your favorite giant fruit. There's a huge one back in there. You can see a little bit. Um, because you don't want to lie to yourself. You want an honest gauge of this plant's uh, genotypic potential. And so for me, I'm going to go ahead and pick this guy, pick that guy, and pick that guy. So hopefully these will just snap off. Yep, just like that. pick this last guy here. Come on. Yeah, I'll take it. And so there we go. And then so we'll go ahead and we'll get a mass for them before we cut them up. And then we'll start looking at some of the flavor characteristics. So we'll go ahead and we'll get a mass here before we start cutting into the fruit. Let it tear to zero. And then put your three fruit on there. So it's 2.49 grams. And so divided by three is 0.83. So each individual three fruit is about 0.83 grams. Put that in the data sheet and then we'll start cutting them up and looking at the inside. And so this guy, uh, you can see the formula, it was 2.49 for three peppers, 
and then we just divide that by three and you can either do that on a calculator or you can do that in Excel or Sheets or whatever you're using. All right, so we're going to go ahead and cut the fruit open and start looking at some of the flavor characteristics. And uh, these guys are so small, I'm just going to go ahead and cut around the top. Trying not to cut the seeds, right? And got to harvest them so I can send them out to you guys. And then do two cuts like this. Just like that. And then we'll see if we can pry the flesh off without making too much of a mess. There we go. There's one half, and then we'll see if we can get the other half off here, just like that. So we have two beautiful halves that we can use for our evaluation, and then we have the seeds there. So it looks like we've got, you know, maybe 25 seed per fruit, and I'm going to go ahead and check the aroma. It has a real nice aroma. Um, I would call it a two just so that you have room to, uh, to go up a little bit. So now we're going to look at the dissolved sugars. And so this device here, which looks like a telescope, is not is a portable refractometer. So on one end, you have the eyepiece right there. And on the other end, you have the slide for the sample. And so we're just going to squeeze some fruit juice onto this slide here. So take one of the halves, squeeze it. You can see a little bit of juice on there. There you go. You don't need a lot. That's more than I need. And then you'll close the slide. And you'll see that it makes a nice uh, connection of the water between the glass and the plastic. And then you look through the eyepiece and it'll tell you how much dissolved sugars are in there. So we're going to try to do this with the camera. You can bear with me here. Oh, eight. All right. So this is what it looks like through there. And so where the white line stops and the blue line begins, that is how much degrees bricks you have. So you see we have five, six, we have just about seven, pretty much 7.0% bricks. So that's not too bad for a pepper. Um, I've seen peppers as low as three and I've seen them as high as about 18. And so this is, you know, it's on the lower end, but that's all right. A lot of peppers are in this range between five to nine. All right, and then last but not least, we do the flavor and the pungency. And so these are obviously everyone's favorite parts, but the, you do have to do them last. you got to get all your data before you start munching on these things. And so rather than throw that whole piece in my mouth and probably light my mouth on fire, I'm going to take a representative piece from the middle. So I like to do about a half a centimeter by a half a centimeter, and then cut off the flesh from the tip of the pepper because it's sweetest, and then cut off the flesh from the top of the pepper because it's hottest, and then you're left with, you know, a small, you know, it's a, it's a half centimeter by a centimeter or so. And when I evaluate my peppers, I always eat a piece this size so that I'm getting a representative amount of capsaicin in my mouth and so that I don't over or underestimate things. And so let's go ahead and try it. Ooh, it's hot. It's about as hot as a char pita. And uh, the flavor's good. It's not... It's got a little bit of a graspy note, but it's very mild. And it's actually got a nice sweetness behind it. So we'll go ahead and we'll put all this data into the data sheet and we'll evaluate the next one. And then the aroma we said was a two. The flavor, it was pretty good other than lighting my mouth on fire. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a three just because I know peppers can have much nicer flavors than was present there. The pungency, Honestly, it's probably a 3, maybe 3.5 if you want. And then the bricks we said was 7.0. And that's it. And then we, uh, we get to do the next guy here, and I'm going to go get myself a glass of half and half to get this, uh, this fire extinguished in my mouth. All right, and so with the evaluation of the fruit done, I can go ahead and harvest seed. And so obviously always take good care to write on the bag what it is. So PA005.01. And then I'm going to go and harvest all of the mature fruit and we will call that the first harvest. So you can see I have quite a few fruit to pick here. Slide you to the side a little bit here. Alright. So I've got the fruit from the evaluation. 
I'll go ahead and include these those in this harvest. And then these will be the seeds that I send out to you guys. How cool is that? And uh, these pedestals crack off really nice, which is which is a good trait. Some peppers really hold on to them and uh, makes it a pain to pick them. A lot of times the uh, calyx will fall off the pepper rather than the pedestal breaking. And there you have it. Uh, the rest of those fruit that are a little bit orange in there, I'll leave for a few more weeks before I harvest. And then we'll take a look at the fruit here. So there you have it. So these are all the fruit. Uh, as you can see, we got two, four, six, eight, ten. So we have, you know, hopefully about 200 seeds here. And then I forgot to show you this part, but make sure you always clean off your refractometer. And so this is just a piece of cotton. Use whatever you can that won't scratch the delicate glass. And then just wipe it off. And if you have a squirt bottle of water, all the better to actually get it clean. Ready for the next guy. This plant is PA004. This is 0.01, so it's the first plant that I evaluated in this population. Uh, it is a full sib of the last plant. So a full sib is they share the same parents, Shira Roja by SC and Ahi Tarpita. This is the other direction of the cross. And you can see the fruit shape is a little different. Uh, it's a lot more like Shira Roja by SC. And even though these are F1s, Shira Roja by F by SC was like an F1 or an early filial generation and so all the F1s they're getting different genetics because it wasn't a completely inbred line and that's why we're actually evaluating these plants trying to find the one that's better than the others and just uh, move forward with the good genetics rather than then guessing early on and, and bringing along deleterious traits. <clears throat> so we're gonna go through and then we're gonna evaluate this plant the same as we did the last one so again, we have uh, some data to fill out before we harvest our fruit. So we have the maturity evaluation, again, mature, immature fruit color. It's a bit harder to see with that anthocyanin blush, that purple pigmentation over top of the uh, green. But these are also light green like the other full sib. And then we uh, do have a mature fruit color modification of anthocyanin, although it does um, fade away or degrade when the fruit comes to maturity as opposed to something like pimenta denied, which uh, retains it. So we're going to again skip the mass, the aroma, the flavor, the pungency, and the bricks for now, and we'll look at the number of fruit per node. Just like the last plant, this one is favoring one to two fruit per node, two early on, and then one a little bit later as the plant gets more vigorous and mature. The productivity, it's not low, it's not high, this is going to be another intermediate value of two. And then in terms of disease, there's no obvious disease in these plants other than a little bit of photo bleaching and a little bit of fertilizer stress, which are both environmental, and they are my fault. Uh, location, indoors, and it's again grown in potting media. And so we're going to go and we're going to pick our three fruit to evaluate, which I'm really not looking forward to because the last one lit my mouth on fire. So we'll take this guy here. That's one. And we'll take this guy here. That's two. And we'll take we'll take this guy here. And so again, I'm just I'm looking at all the peppers and I'm trying to pick something that's going to be representative of what's on the plant. I don't want to just take all of these guys early on because it's not a very accurate judge. And uh, I'll have to come back and evaluate these plants later on because the pungency of the peppers and how sweet the peppers varies depending on what level you are. So this is like the first level, second level, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. And as you get to the higher ones, there's more leaves. Uh, and so you can get a lot more nutrients heading to those fruit and changing some of the fruit quality characteristics. So this is the first evaluation, and that's why we put the date on them so we can make that comparison. But anyways, let's do the fun part and cut these fruit up and start looking at them. So the first step after you do the whole plant evaluation is always to get a mass before you start cutting the fruit up. And so here we have 2.15 uh, grams for the three fruit. And so these are uh, just a little bit smaller than the other plant. All right, so once again, we're gonna take a, a representative pepper here. 
And then my favorite way to do these small fruit is just to go around the top. Make a com cut completely around, not cutting through the seeds, obviously, because we're going to harvest those. And then do the two vertical cuts opposite each other. And then we should be able just to peel that flesh off. Yep, it'll come off in nice clean pieces to evaluate. There we go. And so the first thing to do is always to check the aroma. And it's much the same as last one. It's very strong, um, but not particularly noteworthy. And so now we're going to go ahead and get our bricks reading. And so we got our portable refractometer again, cleaned off from the last one. So we'll take one of these halves, squeeze it over top. And you can see I, I don't have as much juice as last time, but I have plenty here. So lay that down, you'll see you'll get good contact, nice adhe adhesion, yeah, adhesion between the water and the glass. And even though I got a bubble, I'll be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to hold this up to the camera and hopefully it will work the first time. So there you have it. Uh, this one is, it looks to be exactly 10. And uh, when you inspect it by eye, it actually turns out to be 10.2. Each of the gradations in that is a 0.2. And so we'll go ahead and, and put that into our spreadsheet here. And then we're going to do the flavor and the pungency, which is, of course, my favorite part. So again, trying to limit how much my mouth gets set on fire here, we're going to cut away a representative small piece. Cutting away just a small square out of the side and then we cut away the fruit tip and then we cut away the uh, the top of the fruit and we're left with a square from the middle of the side. And I'm going to eat this and I'm probably going to suffer a little bit. Again it's a little bit grassy. Uh, it doesn't come across as very sweet or anything. And the pungency is like the last one. It's like three and a half or four. And uh, I spit that piece out early enough not to completely set my mouth on fire. So lesson learned on that one. And uh, now we'll go ahead and we'll put all this data into the spreadsheet. And normally, you know, it's best to print it out and have a pencil and just go through it as you do it. But as I'm making a video, I'm trying to make it easy for you guys. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this data into our data sheet. Again, normally I would do this in the uh, field, or I would be sitting at my desk while I fill it out, rather than doing it after the fact. But for the sake of making a video for you guys, I had to separate the two tasks. Uh, we're evaluating a ripe fruit, and the immature fruit color is light green, and the mature fruit color is red, and any modifications to the mature fruit color, we do have anthocyanin. And then for the average mass, it was 2.19 divided by 3. And again, you can see, just type in that formula with an equal sign first, and it'll go ahead and calculate that for you to 0.3. Uh, sorry, 0.73. The aroma was a 2. The flavor, again, it wasn't as nice, I don't feel, so I'm going to give it a 2. The pungency, it was just as hot. Uh, 3 might be generous. It might be closer to a 4, but I like to leave room on the scale to, uh, to go up a little bit. Brix was a 10, so it is a little bit sweeter than the first accession, but you'll notice even though it is significantly sweeter, uh, that didn't really reflect in the flavor score, and that's because flavor is a combination of sweetness, acid, and all those other flavors that can be present. Uh, the number of fruit per node, it's, you know, we're going to call it 2. The vigor, it's a 2. Productivity, a 2. Disease, not present, and it was grown indoors in potting soil. And the note to make here is this is that plant with poor architecture. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what comes out of that. That might be a lethal flaw in this plant. But again, these are F1s, and all this stuff is going to segregate in the F2s, and so we'll probably have a chance to go ahead and get rid of that trait uh, and improve on it. And so with that, that's the first two evaluations uh, in the books. And so looking forward to the other plants that are, are coming along rapidly. Um, I think they're all going to be, be pretty hot. Um, we'll see what happens here. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you could 
subscribe to the channel and like these videos. It really helps uh, increase the exposure to other people outside of our community. And the more people we have, the more plants we can grow, and the more plants we can grow, the higher the selection pressure we can have. And if we do that, we should come up with some really nice cultivars. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this video helps you evaluate your fruit. And as always, if you have questions, leave them below the video or go ahead and find us on Reddit at r slash pepperbreeding. And uh, the whole community is there to help you out, myself included. So thank you all. Uh, happy 2022. I hope the year is great for all of us. Thank you guys. Bye.